Okay, number six. What do we have? So it says here that M, N, and P are points on the circle. So you've got M, N, and P with center O. And you can clearly see that we have a diameter here from M straight to N, cutting through the center. And we've got radius from M to O or O to N. Okay. And it says here that we've got a couple lengths and we can see, and it says here that angle M, P, N is a right angle triangle. So this is right angle, meaning if we had to find some lengths, we could use Pythagoras' theorem to find the long side, the hypotenuse. Now, it wants us to work out the circumference of the circle. Okay, so circumference area, we're not actually given a formula, but to make, make it clear, the circumference is always either 2 times pi r, where r is the radius, or the circumference can be written as pi times the diameter, d. Okay, and looking at this head-on, it looks to me that it's easy to find the diameter, which is pretty much the hypotenuse side. And we can find the diameter by using Pythagoras' theorem. So let's call all of this length d, yeah? Once we find d, plug in the formula and then times it by pi and you've done it. So let's do it. So using Pythagoras theorem, it's always going to be the short side squared times the other side squared equals the long side squared. So let's write this equation. 3.5 squared plus 9.7 squared must be d squared. Okay? And let's put this all in the calculator. When you do that, you should get plus 9.7 squared about oof, 106 Point three four equals d squared and then just square root your answer and it comes to about 10.31 and so on and that's about d now plugging this value for d into the circumference formula so it'll just be pi times your answer so in your calculator just type answer times the pi bun and then you should get about 32.4 and they wanted to three same figures and that's it simple not really much to say here is there so let's look at seven now. So it says here that Chow or Shao bought a boat for 160,000 Hong Kong dollars. It's quite okay price. The value of the boat depreciates by 4% each year. Okay, keyword depreciate means them um, decreasing, yeah? And now to do this, this is a very nice, beautiful formula to learn. It's always the original value times some multipliers so or one plus or minus a rate equals the new value and of course and because you're dealing with years because it says work out the value but at the end of three years we just take a power through here which is the number of years or times now all you want to do is literally replace what we know so we have an original value of 160,000. we know that it's decreasing by four percent per year so be one minus instead of r we write four percent in your calculator you should have a percent button if you're not sure how to put it just use the value of 0 0.04 instead of 4%, yeah? So one of these two. And then power to the power to 3. And that's it, you've done it. And this will give you answer. And when you plug this in the calculator, you should get... So I should really just calculate this. So I've actually already done anyway. And I got about... Oof. 141,558 uh, Hong Kong dollars. Easy. I mean, this these are giveaway marks. Literally giveaway marks. Now, next one, Jelena gets a salary increase of 5%. Her salary after the increase is 252,000 um, Hong Kong dollars. Again, same formula applies. So it's always the original value times one plus or minus some rate gives us a new value. And because there's no years involved, we just assume that it's blank. So it's probably one year. So we just replace what we know. So we know that the new value was $252,000. We know that it increased by 5%, so 1 plus 5%. And we're trying to find the, uh, the original value, so let's just keep it OV. And now to find it, all you want to do is literally just make OV the subject. And by doing that, just get 1 plus 5% on the other side. And that's by dividing. So we can say, therefore, the original value is 252,000 over 1 plus 5%. Smash this in your calculator and you should get 240,000. Easy, seriously, these questions, I mean, this formula is very nice because it actually breaks everything down in a very simple way. And it's always the same. If you have years, you put power. If there's no years, you just work out what you want, OV or NV. Pretty, pretty okay. Now, let's move on to the next bit. Okay, eight. So we've got A and B, which is given by some product of prime factors here. And it says here to find the highest common factor and the lowest common multiple. Now, quick tip here, yeah? Quick tip, when you're trying to find the either of these two, I recommend that you always use Venn diagrams. 
Now the reason why is because with Venn diagrams, it's pretty, it pretty much tells you how to find everything. For example, the middle area is actually known as the intersection, which is the highest common factor. So whatever goes in the middle is HCF, but wherever you get all three segments will be LCM. So let's have a go. We'll, we'll do this as we, as we go. So looking at A and B, let's see what they both have in common. So I'm going to start with sevens. They both have at least, you know, three powers of seven. So we can put seven to power three, but B has an extra seven. Now five looks like only A has five. Um, three, well, they both have a three. I mean, A has three. Um, so they both have three, so put in the center. But then A has an extra uh, four powers of three. So B has only one power of five, and A has three powers, uh, five powers of three. And lastly, we have B has two to power three, and that's it. So we pretty much have everything. And therefore, to, to write down the answers now, we just look at the, the Venn diagram and we realize that the middle part, the intersection, is the highest common factor. So that means the HCF is 3 times 7 to the power 3. You can put this or write the values totally up to you. I'm not too sure because I'm not giving it out yet. But anyway, I'll probably put this and the answer underneath. Now for the LCM, it's literally every single element. So it would be 5 times 3 to the power 4 times 7 to the power 3 times 3. It's literally every single element. All of these is the LCM and just collecting it nicely just I'll start with the smallest so starting with 2 we have firstly 2 to the power 3 times and if we look at the 3's we have 1 3 here and 3 to the power 4 and if we collect and we have 3 to the power 5 looking at number 5 we only have a single 5 and looking at 7 we have 7 to the power 3 and 7 so that's 7 to the power 4 that's it okay part B now Oof. So given that the HCF of B and C is this, and the LCM of A and C is that, find the values of P, Q, and R. Okay, and P, Q, and R is actually in the C expression. Now, quick tip. This one can look a bit tricky, but really it's not. It's just about how you go about it. When you have the LCM, always use that first, okay? Always use this first. The reason why is because the LCM only cares about the highest power out of the two options. So looking at A and C, for example, we have 2 to the power 4. A does not even have 2, but C has 2. That means if the highest power is 4, that means P is, must clearly be 4. So we can say so far, P is 4. And now let's look at the next one. We've got 3 to the power 5. C does not have 3, but A does. And clearly we can see 3 to the power 5. So that actually checks out. And our next one, 5 to the power 2. A has only 5, and this is 5 to the power 1, whereas C has 5 to the power Q. That means Q must be 2, because remember, we want the highest power out of one of the two options. And since it's 2, Q has to be 2 for this to actually be true. So Q is definitely 2. Now, the last one isn't that obvious. We've got 7 to the power 3. However, A already has 7 to the power 3. But C, we, it could be, C could be 7 to the power 3 or less. Remember, this is the highest power of these two. So that means we can't assume that R is 3 or 2 or 1 or even 0. So it has to be, so we have to look at now the HCF. Now the HCF just cares about the minimum, um, that what they both have at least. Now it tells us that of B and C, they both have at least a single power 7. This means R must be 1 because for this to be true, this has to be only a single power 7. If it was 2, then it would say 7 power 2. So R must be 1. And that's it. That's literally everything done here. So we should have four, two, and one. Now, if you guys understood this, you know, please let me know. And um, if you guys uh, want another deeper explanation on this, again, just you know, pop a co pop a comment down, and I'll try and help you as soon as I can. Anyway, let's move on to nine. So this one, I've already jumped in and gone ahead and done this because this question is a bit lengthy, and that is really noticing the fact that we need to calculate the perimeter of this whole shape and that is the, the lengths around the, the star. Now to do this you'll notice that we've got loads of right angle triangles here and we're given a simple one just with some information already. The trick for these kind of questions is to always work out every single length of these triangles first and then figure out how to play it here. So let's go ahead and work out the, the lengths of this triangle first before we look at the shape, the big shape altogether. So the first thing I always recommend is to label this size. So I'm going to call the, the adjacent length here x and the hypotenuse y. And just a quick recap, the, the, the length opposite the angle of interest is known as the opposite. Yeah? So again, opposite of opposite. This side is the adjacent, oops, aj, adj, and this is the hypotenuse. So when we look at this shape here, we always have to think Sokotoa, yeah? So 
so ka toa. Now, what I'm going to do is use firstly soccer toe to find one of the sides and then use Pythagoras theorem to find the other side. So right now I'm going to say, okay, let's find the opposite. Let's find the value Y. And to do that, we already have one information, which is the opposite. So we can call this one O and uh, the value Y, which is H. So using O and H, that's going to be so, because so has O and H. So to write this as an equation, so is always written as the sine of the angle, i.e. 72, equals the opposite of, a, of the hypotenuse. Same with the rest. This would be cos equals adjacent over hypotenuse, tan equals opposite over adjacent. So in this case, the opposite over hypotenuse, so the opposite is 12.8 over the hypotenuse, which is y. So just make y the subject now. And to do that, just times y across and smash sine 72 to the left. So y equals 12.8 over sine 72. Put this in your calculator, and I've already found the lens, by the way. If you put this in calculator, you should get 13.459. So update the values here and write about 13.459. My tip usually is to not round it off, but because they want actually three senior figures, just do it to, I don't know, free DP for now. Now let's go on to the next bit here. Yeah? So now we found this value, so we can actually delete all this information. We can just work out the, the third length, which I said was, was uh, X, right? And to use um, Pythagoras' theorem, it's always, um, for example, the short side squared. So A, for example, in this case, is x squared plus 12.8 squared must equal the hypotenuse squared. So essentially, it's like this. x squared plus 12.8 squared equals the long side squared. Okay, so nice and easy. So let's go ahead and make, move, make x a subject here. So subtract 12.8 squared across. So you get all that information minus 12.8 squared, smash this in the calculator, and then square root answer, and you should get 4.159, okay? So I'm gonna use this um, triangle here, because speed, uh, just to speed time up a bit. Now, let's go back to the main um, information here, so the main shape. So now, to work out the perimeter, you'll notice that I put some red lines and purple lines. Well, the red lines, if you can see, is actually, it's so, it's actually identical to this length over here, the opposite. Because you've got the right angle here, and if you just twist your head a bit, or just look at this triangle here, this triangle is the same as this, must be 12.8. So all the red bits are 12.8. Okay, typically, it's always best to keep the answers in unrounded form. The only reason why, if we go back to these values here, so I made a, like just a few changes, by the way, and I've got the exact answers and stuff. Um, for this particular question, when you actually work out with the rounded forms I gave you, you might get an answer which is about 110.5. And when you round it up, you'll get 111. And that would be a problem because this is the exact answer. So actually, it's so close to 110.5. Edexcel might give you a mark for that anyway. And the correct answer is actually 110. They might say 111 is also fine. But yeah, generally speaking, keep the unrounded form. So in your calculations, when you want to work out this short length, which is, by the way, the difference between the hypotenuse and the adjacent because you can see you've got the adjacent bit here and the hypotenuse so it's, 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 this is essentially y minus x all you want to do is usually type this into your calculator minus this value here to get a very small answer and then you then you want to times five lots of it so our perimeter therefore is going to be what five times 12.8 plus five times whatever y minus x gave us the difference of these two and putting this in your calculator, summing this up in, in total should give us about or exactly 110 point so on. And to three similar figures, we look at the, um, the, four, the, the fourth value here. It's less than five, so it must be 110. And that's it. I, mean, I hope this explanation helped and um, you know doesn't confuse things. But typically, always keep your unrounded forms. Yeah, That should help you get the final answer.